Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla Against Mecha Godzilla. Now, Godzilla Against Mecha Godzilla came out in 2002, and this is the 27th film in the Godzilla franchise. 26th, if you don't count the 1998 American Godzilla. And this is the fourth film of what is known as the Millennium Godzilla series. Now, up until this point, there really was no continuity between any of the Millennium films because the Millennium series was meant to be sort of an anthology series where each film was set in its own universe. This movie, however, kind of begins a two-part story arc within this series because the movie right after this, Godzilla Tokyo SOS, was a direct sequel to this one. Now, this movie redoes the whole Mecha Godzilla concept, a concept that was first introduced in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla and then was reinvented in 1993's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Now, plot-wise and stylistically, this movie bears a lot of similarities to 2000's Godzilla vs. Megagirus, which was the second film of the Millennium series. Like, both movies have very similar main characters. And the film's from the same director as Godzilla vs. Megagirus, so in a lot of ways, this movie kind of feels like sort of an improvement upon what the director tried to do with that movie. Now, this film acts as a direct sequel to the original Godzilla, ignoring the continuity of all the other Godzilla films that came in between. However, the movie does retcon the very end of the original Godzilla, because at the end of the original film, Godzilla was destroyed with the Oxygen Destroyer, and you saw Godzilla's flesh melt from his bones, but then you saw his bones dissolve as well. This kind of retcons that, where only his flesh melted away, but his bones remained. The reason I'm bringing this up is because the bones of the original Godzilla actually play a major role in this movie. However, the film is also in continuity with the original Mothra movie from 1961 because there is a brief flashback to that movie. The film is also in continuity with 1967's War of the Gargantuas, which would technically make this also in continuity with Frankenstein Conquers the World because War of the Gargantuas was a sequel to Frankenstein Conquers the World. Although, to be fair, the continuity between those two films was loose to say the least. But I thought that was interesting that even though this movie is retconning the continuity of most of the franchise besides the original film, it is trying to bring some of Toho's other science fiction films outside of the Godzilla series into the continuity of this film's universe. Now, what the plot of Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is it begins in the year 1999 and another Godzilla emerges and threatens Japan and the world at large. And the movie follows a young soldier for the Japanese military who in the beginning of the film, in a state of panic, accidentally gets some of her fellow soldiers killed. So, in the film, in order to combat this new Godzilla, the Japanese government assembles a team of scientists to build a cyborg version version of Godzilla from the bones of the original Godzilla. Eventually in the movie there's sort of a time jump to three years later and this young soldier who has now been disgraced, it turns out there are some higher ups who want to forgive her and she ends up getting picked out to pilot this new Mecha Godzilla, which she is now determined to do as a form of redemption for what she did. Now, Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla is a good, competently made movie, but my issue with the film is it doesn't really go beyond anything but that. Like, plot-wise, this movie really is just kind of a standard run-of-the-mill Godzilla movie, which would have been fine, but this is coming out right after GMK, which was one of the most unique takes on the Godzilla mythos, and here we have this, which really does feel like kind of a step backwards, because it's some of the same shit we've seen before. Now again, technically speaking, the movie is good. It's well-made, well-acted, but the movie never seems to go beyond anything but that, in my opinion. Now, what the movie does have some interesting ideas, like the idea that Mechagodzilla in this film is made from the bones of the original Godzilla. That is a cool, unique idea, even though it's a big continuity error if you connect this back to the original film. But I thought it was interesting how in the film it does kind of imply that Kiru or Mechagodzilla could potentially have a soul. But in the movie, 
movie, they touch on this really interesting idea where in the film, Kiru kind of starts to remember when he was Godzilla and he starts moving on his own and starts attacking buildings and stuff. And okay, that that's actually really interesting, but the movie doesn't really do much with that. Like, it kind of just becomes a minor subplot in the film when they really could have done a lot more with it, in my opinion. But I did think it was interesting how the film is almost more about Kiru than it is about Godzilla. And Kiru, despite being a machine, is a character in this movie, and while he's not my personal favorite interpretation of Mecha Godzilla, I could see why fans really gravitate towards him. Now, despite being cliched, the characters in the movie are pretty good. Yuriko Shaku plays the main character, Akani, who is a very sympathetic character. Like, you really do feel her guilt over this accident that got these men killed. And while she is a strong character, there definitely is a sense of vulnerability about her. Now, in the movie, you also follow this father and daughter. The father is one of the scientists working on Kiru, and their relationship in the film is actually quite sweet, and in a lot of ways is almost the heart of the movie. And you do start to see a relationship develop between the father and Akani. Now, what the father was played by Shin Takuma, who also played one of the main characters in The Return of Godzilla. You actually get several actors and actresses from some of the other Godzilla movies showing up in this. Like, Kumi Mizuno has a small role in the movie as a character who starts off the film as Japan's Prime Minister, but she ultimately resigns. Now, Kumi Mizuno was, of course, in Godzilla vs. Monster Zero and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. And Akira Nakao, who played Commander Aso in the Heisei Godzilla series, plays the character who takes over as Prime Minister. Takahito Murata, who is in several other Godzilla films, has a very brief cameo appearance in this movie. Misio Tanaka, who played the main character of Godzilla vs. Megagirus, has a very brief cameo appearance in this film as a nurse. Now, overall, I can say that I do recommend Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, but it is a good but not great Godzilla movie. It's very middle of the road, in my opinion. But that was my review on Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, and bye.